I want to break down the best college football team performances of week six and the first team that needs to be celebrated that needs to be uh given a high five and praise are the vanderbilt commodores they have not beaten alabama since 1984 and alabama came out there with that broken stadium that they're expanding and repairing and they got a win a 40 to 35 win that's the most points that they've scored against Alabama since, you know, like 30, 40, 50 years. That's how long it's been. So this is a historic win. It's been 40 years since they won. It's been 60, 50, 60 years since they've scored this many points. And I got to give Diego Pavia, their quarterback and their uh, head coach, Clark Lee, all sorts of credit because they played with, as as Rafferty would say, onions, onions. <laughs> they, the big balls crew. They went for it on fourth down. On third downs, they were aggressive. They did not play run and punt football. And fortune favors the aggressive. And especially when you're trying to pull off a big time upset, you do have to be aggressive. And they were just that and they deserve all the credit in the world for it. So that was a huge win for Vanderbilt. And oh man, the aggressiveness that they played. I was cheering, excited for them because I love to see good football. I love to see players like Diego Pavia stepping up and absolutely balling out. So good job, Vanderbilt. You're probably going to, you know, you're going to win six games this year, but now you are on the opportunity where you can make a, uh, make a bowl game for sure. All right, next team up, we got the Arkansas Razorbacks. They had Tennessee stroll out there and think that they were going to roll them nice orange helmets out on the field, white and orange helmets out on the field and everything was going to be okay. No. No, that's not what happened. And Sam Pittman, their head coach, who has been on the hot seat for the majority coming into this season, and then especially after that Oklahoma State loss, is now squarely, uh, he's chilling right now because now it feels like he has the Razorbacks going in the right direction and such a huge win over a top five ranked team. It deserves all the credit in the world. Uh, next team up, the Washington Huskies. They have a brand new head coach in Jed Fish, and they were playing in a rematch of the national championship game, even though nothing about it was a rematch because there was only seven returning starters between both of those teams. And Washington did what they didn't do against Rutgers, and they did what they didn't do against Washington State, which was find a way to lose a game that you should win. And the and the sharps and the and the betters and the line makers, they knew something. So when Washington was favored in this game, when the line first came out at two and a half, it absolutely shocked people because Michigan had beaten uh, Minnesota the week before. They had beaten USC, and Washington is a totally different football team. And they had two losses already, so people were confused as to how Washington was favored but they ran the ball. They stopped Michigan from running the ball. And this is very good for the Huskies. Good job. Uh, next team up, Texas A&M. I got to give Mike Elko a lot of credit. Huge win against Missouri, a 41 to 10 win. This was an absolute domination. They went back to Connor Weakman now that his shoulder is back healthy in there and, and they played really good football this texas a&m team the way that they are currently constructed now that connor wigman is not turning the ball over well he didn't in this game against missouri they have a legitimate chance to finish in the top four of the sec next team up the minnesota golden gophers they played against usc it, it was striking it was absolutely striking to me how they uh, won this football game after the way that they performed against Michigan. Now, granted, they got hosed. They should have had a chance to win that Michigan game, but the refs screwed them. But it's their fault for getting down so big in that football game. And you guys, make sure that you guys swipe up, like, subscribe, 
get notifications. I'm going to give you a second to go to the YouTube channel. Subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and click the like button because we need you guys to continue to share the show because this is the best damn college football show around. Now on to the worst college football performances of week six. First of which, the Cow Bears. We were rooting for you. Oh, 39-38 loss against Miami. They were up 35 to 10. Complete domination. And they found a way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. First of all, yes, it was a good performance from them. So you're like, George, how the hell would they end up on the worst of the week? When you lose a 25-point lead, when you were had a 25-point lead either at the start of the fourth quarter or at the very end of the third quarter, yes, you're going to make it on the worst of the week list. And their head coach, Justin Wilcox, did a great job of managing the game throughout the beginning. They put Cam Ward in hell, mistakes, capitalized on them. And then when it came down to it, they couldn't get stops and they couldn't move the ball well enough when it came to closing out the game. So yes, that's going to land you on the worst of the week list. Next up, the Michigan Wolverines. Their 27 to 17 loss to Washington was putrid. And it's not because they're necessarily that much better than Washington or anything like that. It's the fact that they are getting such poor play from the quarterback position. They started Alex Orgy, let him throw seven passes, and then benched him for Tuttle, and then he didn't throw the ball all that great either. They combined to throw the ball for over their last three-game average, which was 83 yards. They threw for barely over 100, but that ain't good enough, especially in a game that you're losing. Oh, listen, uh, Michigan fans, I peeked over at the Michigan board. They are not happy with what Jerome Moore is putting on the field right now. So he has to figure out something with this offense. Maybe they need to go triple option or something until they find somebody who can throw the football. Next team up, Tennessee. Tennessee at Arkansas, 19 to 14. I was very, very surprised that the Tennessee offense has not taken better steps at this point in time this is a good football team their defense has been good they look they held arkansas to 19 points it was a comeback victory but it's the tennessee offense that's holding this team back right now they got a redshirt freshman quarterback and nico iamalava who i like a lot who's going to be a really good quarterback but at the end of the day you have to win the games and these are the games that you're supposed to win and Tennessee, who was ranked in the top five this week, the AP poll came out, has them in the top eight right now still. This is not a top eight football team. And when you look at the rest of their schedule, this could be a three loss football team. But just for week six, not a good enough performance. Ends you up on the worst of the week list. Next up, Missouri. They got their head beat in by Texas A&M 41 to 10. And you know what the best part of this whole thing was? Was that there was a whole bunch of trash talking before, during the game. Mm -mm -mm. You talk to trash, you got to back it up. And Texas A&M backed it up. But this Missouri team, they have been showing signs that they have that they are not as good as some people think that they are. They had they absolutely struggled versus Boston College. And then they had trouble with Vanderbilt too, but then people will tell you, oh, but this is the gauntlet, that is the SEC. All right, we will get into more of that in a little bit, but sorry, Missouri. Last team up on the list, the Alabama Crimson Tide. This was a historic loss, 40 to 35 against Vandy. It's been 40 years since they beat you and you let them win. I think I saw a crazy stat that Nick Saban only allowed uh, 13 points to them the whole time he was there. Oh, and this is where Kalen DeBoer, their head coach, is going to find out what it's like to coach in uh, Tuscaloosa because the same because they could have got over the Georgia loss, a, a close loss or a heartbreaker, but to lose to Vandy, that's going to be unacceptable. This is like one of them Marcus Freeman losses at Notre Dame where they lost to Marshall when Marshall was unranked. They lost to uh, Stanford, which was a three and nine football team that year. And then to NIU, 
Yeah, this is one of them types of losses. Not good.